Hey everybody, Scotty Steph, VP of Product here at Tangle with another Tangle tutorial, this time about rooms. So central to Tangle are two key concepts, your user panel, that's how you and others show up in Tangle, and rooms, that's where y'all get to hang out and work and collaborate. If I can teach you these two things, then you're 90% of the way to being a Tangle wizard. If you haven't watched our Tangle tutorial user panel video yet, you may want to go back and watch that one first. So rooms are the places where your team gets together and tangle. You can create as many of them as you like and for whatever purpose you need. You'll see below that in this demo we have rooms for sprint planning, team stand-ups, and just getting together to play video games. Moving between rooms is quick and easy. Just click on the door to a room to head there. Hey Scott Bot. In Tangle, there are three kinds of rooms. The lobby is the first room on every server. It has this kind of cool little outline on the outside. This is the first room on your server, so it'll be here when you start. It's also the first place where new users arrive, so a lot of teams like to use this space to decorate with onboarding or welcoming info. The first room a user creates will become their homeroom. I'll create one real quick because I don't have a homeroom on the server yet. To create a room, just click on the room icon on the toolbar and then click wherever you want to place your room. You can always move it later, so don't be too worried about this. I'm going to go ahead and move over to my home room. You can tell it's a home room because it has the home icon next to the room name. If we go down here and we look at Scottbot's lab, you can see that's Scottbot's home room. The unique thing about a home room is that it's where you will start or where that user will start every time they log into Tangle. So you always know where you'll be when you hit that join button. Finally, you can create as many public rooms as you'd like for whatever purpose you'd like. The sky is the limit. These rooms that we created down here, Sprint Planning, uh, design, team design Team Dungeon, and the Gamers Guild are all public rooms. You can tell because they have this outline around the outside that's broken, and they also have uh, no home icon next to the title. So the central feature of a room is the door. Doors can be opened or closed. When a door is open, any video you show in your user panel or anything you say is visible and audible to anyone else in your server. This creates a sense of a live dynamic office where you can overhear other conversations, and it leads to a lot of swivel chair moments where you can overhear other teams' conversations and join their room to pitch in. As you can see over here, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my webcam for ScottBot's room. That's right, ScottBot was me the whole time. Uh, but you can see that from my room up here, we can see ScottBot's video feed down here. And I could overhear anything ScottBot is saying. And if your coworkers are being too loud and you just want a little privacy or you don't want to overhear their conversations, there's an environmental volume slider right down here on the lower left on the lower right hand side of the control bar, you can use this to control the volume of overheard conversations. If it's all the way to the right, at loud, you'll hear people almost as if they were in your own room. If it's all the way to the left here at quiet, you've essentially muted them. A lot of people like to keep it at about a 25%, which gives you a warm cafe style chatter without it being distracting. Audio from other rooms is also spatially moderated, which is to say the further away you are from a room, the less you'll hear it. So you can always pick up your room and just move it far away from the conversation if people are being too loud. So that's an open door. Let's talk about a closed door. You can close a door by clicking on the door icon or by using the D hotkey. A closed door will have this dashed line around it. When a door is closed, the audio and video stay inside the room, which allows you to have completely private conversations or just some heads down time. The only things that are visible to someone outside of a closed room are your status and your avatar. To demonstrate this, let's take a look down at ScottBot's room. Let's open up my door. Here's ScottBot's room down here. I'm going to set a status that says, hello to the world. And then I'm going to close the door to ScottBot's room. You'll see that I can no longer see ScottBot's video feed, but I can see their status. So if ScottBot says, in a big meeting, 
I'll know why their door is closed. But you might say, hey, how do I get access to someone in a closed room? Let's say I have something really important to say to Scottpot. This is where door knocking comes in. Door knocking is really simple. It's like knocking on a door in real life. I'm going to go ahead and close my door and have Scottbot knock on it. Whoops, I forgot to close the door. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and close that door. Doop. And now I'm going to have Scottbot knock on that door. You'll see that I get this prompt here that says Scottbot is knocking. I can allow or deny them entry. I'm going to hit allow. It'll bring them right into my room. Hi, Scottbot. Oh, I'm giving away the trick. Hi, Scottbot. <laughs> And I'm going to show you that from the other side as well about what it looks like when you knock on a closed door. So I'm going to open up my door. Let's send Scottbot back to their room and close the door to Scottbot's lab. Now let's say I need to get a hold of Scottbot even though they're in a big meeting. I'll knock on their door and you'll see you get a notification that says you've knocked on the room. Please wait for the occupants to respond. I'm going to wait until this uh, timer times out just so you can see what that looks like too. It says no one answered the incoming knock, so maybe Scottbot is just too busy in that meeting. But it's okay, I could always leave a sticky on the room saying, Hey, I stopped by. Call me after your meeting. Hope it went well. And then Scottbot knows to reach out to me uh, after their big meeting. Whew. So let's go through some other fun stuff with rooms. You can click on the title to a room to edit some details about that room. First, you could change the title of a room. How about Scotty's Tangle Academy? You can also change the color of a room by clicking down here on this palette. It's pretty cool. And you could always delete a room with this trash can. I'm not going to delete it because we're hanging out inside of it. And the only room you can't delete or move is your lobby. Finally, again, you can always pick up a room by clicking over here and then just moving and dragging the room wherever you might want to. So if you're feeling a little lonely and you want to be closer to your team or you just need to move your desk closer to where the action is, you can always just pick it up and move it. All right. Well, let's go huddle up with Scottbot while we wrap up this tutorial, just so we don't feel too lonely. All right, it is my great pleasure to say that you are now a Tangle Wizard. If you know about user panels and you know about rooms, then you know about 90% of the stuff that makes Tangle great. We've done a couple of other tutorial videos about objects, about these navigation bars here, that go into a lot of the details about what makes Tangle special and fun, but we also encourage you to experiment. Because we built Tangle for your team and your style, not just one vision of what work could be. So play around. If you have questions, watch the other um, tutorial videos, but also feel free to contact us using our support page or send me an email. You can reach me at scottstefan at absurdjoy.com. But until then, happy tangling! <laughs>